from the organization that lit the Centennial Bridge, secured the funding for the Credit Island Bridge, designed and developed the Arsenal Pedestrian Bridge, connected trails with bridges in Sunderbrook Park and Blackhawk State Historic Site, and spearheaded the Duck Creek Trail Bridge, comes a new bridge project designed to link us to the Mississippi River, our heritage, and our future. The first bridge has over a 150-year connection to the community and the nation. On the corner of River Drive and Federal Street in Davenport lies the original embankment for the first railroad bridge across the Mississippi River. One rail still stretches out towards the bridge's other end along the shore of Rock Island. By the 1850s, the crossing from Rock Island, Illinois to Davenport, Iowa had been identified as the best place along the Mississippi for this important bridge. It was directly west of Chicago, and the island acted as a stepping stone across this section of the river with its limestone riverbed. In addition, the rapids and navigation channel here had been mapped by Robert E. Lee in 1837. After two years of construction, the bridge opened to great fanfare on April 21, 1856. Newspapers across the country marked the significance of the event. The engineering achievements of spanning the river had resulted in an impressive wooden how truss bridge, over 1,500 feet long and painted white. There were five fixed spans distinguished by burr truss arches and a 286-foot swing span which allowed passage through the draw for the many riverboats. Imagine what it must have looked like to a pilot coming around the bend. It would have been astounding because it was, there was no other bridge across the river. Uh, they would have been amazed at the, at the distance between the piers, 250 feet. Each of the spans was an immense span. Two weeks after the first train crossed the river, the steamboat Effie Afton struck a bridge pier and caught fire. One entire span and the boat were burned. The subsequent lawsuit became a defining chapter in the nation's development. Steamboat interests argued the bridge was an obstruction to navigation, while the railroads and one of their lawyers, a young Abraham Lincoln, argued that one person had as much right to cross the river as another had to sail up and down it. The Supreme Court ultimately agreed and the bridge remained. The impact of this case is still felt today. Abraham Lincoln rose to national prominence and the Transcontinental Railroad became a reality. Remember, Lincoln had to be president when the North was fighting South but he also was the president that said, let's, let's connect the East with the West. If I were asked to pick the symbol, to put my thumb on a map of where that connection between East and West began, it was not at the arch in St. Louis. That's for Lewis and Clark history. The real beginning of connecting of East and West was the bridge that connected Rock Island, Illinois with Davenport, Iowa. Just 10 years later, the first bridge was replaced on the same embankment and piers. Then in 1872, it was replaced by a new bridge downstream, where the current government bridge now spans the river. It's no secret that the Mississippi River is an American icon known throughout the world. Yet the facts that the first railroad bridge crossed at this point and that the original embankment has been largely untouched since that time are not well known, making the site a kind of buried treasure in our own backyard. This rare historic structure has been hiding in plain view all this time. Now River Action has secured and cleared the property to pay tribute to this remarkable story. The tale of the Effie Afton, Abraham Lincoln, and the railroads has been told time and time again, but there are only two known photographs of the original bridge. Detailed descriptions, maps, paintings, and drawings are all that is left for the public record. Using these historical specifications, River Action proposes to reconstruct one complete span identical to the original. It would rest on the original embankment 
and provide safe passage across River Drive to the new River Heritage Park and Trail. While it would not carry trains, this bike and pedestrian bridge would open a new connection to the river and its history. Well, I think of bridges and trails as connections. So this particular bridge, this replica bridge, will, will connect several things. First of all, it'll connect the riverfront to the, the city itself. Uh, it'll connect our past and the present uh, because you'll be able to literally uh, walk on history, walk where history occurred with that, uh, uh, the, the abutment being the location of the first uh, bridge across the Mississippi River. The addition of the new bridge also builds on the development resurgence in the area. So downtown has become a destination of choice to live. And so these kinds of amenities will only enhance that as a destination of choice to live. And further what will happen from that I believe is that if it's a destination of choice to live, it'll be then a destination of choice for businesses. So all of these things create more momentum. Not only can residents enjoy this amenity, but so can visitors. Well, heritage tourism is important because of the kind of visitor it attracts. Uh, the visitor who appreciates heritage is going to appreciate a more authentic experience. They're going to stay longer. They're going to buy more local arts and crafts and local products. And that enhances the, uh, the total experience for, for the visitor as well as improving our local economy. Tourism is just one way our community is impacted. According to the National Park Service, whose Save America's Treasures program helps preserve the irreplaceable historical character of places such as this railroad embankment, historic preservation has proven economic, environmental, and social benefits. Studies show that historic districts maintain higher property values, less population decline, more walkability, and greater sense of community. Utilizing this historic remnant to reconstruct the significant first bridge would celebrate our unique cultural heritage, much the same way that reconstructions in Williamsburg, Virginia celebrate colonial America. And the reconstructed covered bridges in New England and the Midwest maintain a sense of place and attract visitors. Locally, we see great value in the reconstruction of the Colonel Davenport House to its original specifications. In fact, the Colonel Davenport House is next to where the first bridge abutment was located on the Illinois side of the river. When the new first bridge is in place, it will no longer be shrouded in mystery. It will stand in its rightful place, in view of the government bridge, the Colonel Davenport and LeClaire houses, and as an entrance to the new River Heritage Park, which pays tribute to the events that shaped the Quad Cities and can positively impact the economy. Budgets have yet to be finalized, but already the property has been secured and cleared, and planning started with key groups. Much of the work, including engineering design, is being provided pro bono. Fundraising will commence immediately, and bids for landscaping and construction will follow. Grants for the estimated $1.5 million project will be sought from historic preservation groups, Iowa and federal DOT, local foundations and other sources that support historic reconstruction and trail development. So to be able to drive down River Drive and then see the first bridge would be a tremendous gateway. Bringing history to life while embracing modern urban redevelopment gives the Quad Cities one more reason to be proud of this unique and magnificent stretch of the Mississippi River.